The Susan Brenda Show is a radio show online broadcasted on YouTube across the United States and globally. The show features guests who speak about health, spirituality, entertainment, and a host of subjects to enlighten people across the nation. Listen to the show that empowers women and men alike and highlights those who have made a difference. I'm Susan Brender, and this is The Susan Brender Show. And I'll tell you something. We are living in a really chaotic time, a time where people have been stuck in their houses for so long, and there's been so many people who say to themselves, what can I do to feel better? This is a very important question, and I know Scott Miller, who I've interviewed many times, who I consider a friend, actually, has really talked about so many different things that people can do when they're hurting. And a lot of people over the age of 40, I mean, nowadays, they're really doing things they shouldn't be doing. And as a result of that, Scott is a perfect place for them to go. Scott Miller, physical therapy. Now, we have Alan Meisner, who is a National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer and a functional aging institute certified functional aging specialist you know i want to ask you uh alan you know, you know because there's so much more to your bio but when we call you a certified functional aging specialist what does that mean to you first susan thank you for having me on the show i really appreciate this opportunity uh, basically, what happens is as we get older, we often get into very bad movement patterns or, or non-movement patterns, you know, being sedentary for a long period of time, crunching over our computer, crunching over our phone and spending a lot of time uh, dysfunctioning our body, you know, um, get tight hips, we get tight legs, you, maybe you walk on uh, heels for most of your adult life, uh, and now your body just doesn't move in a natural functional way. And as the result, it's very easy to hurt yourself. So what I do with the functional aging and with some of the things I do with my clients is we figure out some of those mo movement dysfunctions. And then we do some exercises to specifically uh, address uh, the muscles that are too tight and the muscles that are too loose and get you stronger and get you fitter and get you healthier and more functional. Scott, you heard what uh, Alan just said. Your uh, practice does a lot for people's bodies. It really does. And you help them in many ways. Now, you just heard what Alan said. Is there something that you do that is a specialized form of physical therapy? Um, well, you know, physical therapists also look at the, you know, uh, functional movements to improve, uh, to improve pain um, and to improve the uh, patient's overall function. You know, we might be, um, you know, working with, with clients that are dealing maybe with a more specific or localized um, injury or, um, or pain that we're trying to, trying to help. But we certainly do look at the, you know, overall mechanics of, of the body and of, of, you know, normal human movement to, uh, uh, to achieve, you know, optimal function for, you know, to help cure whatever is going on because, you know, most likely that's what caused their, um, their injury in the first place. Could be, it could be a weakness, it could be a tightness, it could be, you know, poor, uh, poor um, uh, movement patterns that we uh, certainly need to address. So, you know, it's certainly, we, we'd certainly work uh, hand in hand um, with, um, you know, with gentlemen like, uh, like Alan and, and what he does. Yeah. You know, Alan, you said that there's a difference between the way people in their 20s versus the way people in their 40s and older, um, they deal with, you know, what you do. Um, you treat them in different ways, don't you? Absolutely. You know, um, you can think back to when you were in your 20s or teens and how resilient you were, how almost immortal we, we felt back then. Uh, we could do something that was kind of silly. Uh, we might be a little sore, but we recovered relatively quickly and typically were not badly injured. However, over time, those, those things do add up. And so if we've been sedentary for a long period of time, or we had some injuries when we were younger, like a, a turned ankle or something else, uh, typically we start to see those injuries kind of resurface as we get older. Uh, and this time we're not as resilient. So we do have to be very careful about how we approach training uh, and the different things that we're going to do 
uh, because rule number one, don't break thyself. You know, uh, you want to yeah. get stronger and you want to get better. Uh, injury is something that really will sideline you for a long, potentially a long time. And that's why it's important for you to have a care team. If you've injured yourself, you go see an orthopedic doctor, go see a, a physical therapist, get that issue resolved. And then after you've worked with someone like Scott for a while, they're going to tell you, okay, now you can get in the gym and get strong, get fit and, and do the things. And that's where I step in to make sure that what they are doing is appropriate to their age and what their needs are. You know, Scott, I'll tell you something. When I go to your office and I admit to the audience that I use Scott as a physical therapist because of injuries that I've had and problems that I've had. Now, Scott, I've seen in your office a lot of young people. Um, in fact, the other day I saw a, a kid, I, I would say that he might have been about 14 years old, and he was being treated. Now, when you treat these kids, is there a difference between you, the way you treat them as compared to the older people that you see? Um, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and, and it, it all depends on the type of injury. So we, we certainly do see different types of injuries. Um, and, you know, as an athlete, whether you're 14 years old or you're, you know, 64 years old, you know, certain, uh, you know, overuse injuries do occur. Um, certain surgeries are needed. Um, but the, uh, the, the type of movement, um, certainly, uh, and exercise certainly, um, you know, is going to be dictated by, you know, by, by how someone's responding to, uh, to the treatment. And certainly a 14 year old is going to respond a little bit differently than, um, you know, a 60 or 70 year old. Um, however, you know, we, we, you know, we'll base that on, you know, exactly what we're treating them for, what injury they had, how they had that injury. And, um, you know, we have to work with the, with normal body healing times as well. So we take, uh, we take all of that into consideration and, you know, uh, the patient's, prior level of function and uh, their prior activity level plays a major, a major role with uh, recovery and, 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 you know, and, and how they respond to treatment as well. You know, it's an interesting thing that the two of you are doing something similar. Now, what I want to know is, Alan, you've written a book, which really is called the Wellness Roadmap. You take readers through the process called the Wellness GPS. What is that and why is it important for anyone wanting the lasting changes? Well, most of us, when we approach a change, and I will just, I'll just use the term weight loss or fitness or whatever that is towards, towards trying to be a better person, uh, we start with the, what's the diet I need to do? What's the exercise program I need to do? So we start with strategies and tactics rather than getting to the heart of why we are where we are in the first place. We need to start with the, the GPS, which is exactly how you would go if you were going to drive from where you live to, I don't know, say Philadelphia. And each of us is starting from a different place and each of us might be going to a different address when we get there. So our paths are going to be slightly different. So the GPS is basically a three-step process to get yourself ready to actually do the change. So G stands for grounding. And that includes having a commitment. And that commitment means you know why you're doing what you're doing and it's important to you. So there's some backing to it. And then you know where you're going. So that's your commitment and your grounding. The P is for personalization. And that's where you start looking at things like SMART goals and, and how you can set up things in, in place that are gonna help you be effective. And so, you know, if, you, if you're trying to go get something done and you don't see a change, uh, will that dishearten you? And for a lot of us, it will. And, you know, if you don't see the scale changing or you don't feel like you're getting stronger. So with the, with the personalization, we look at multiple areas of measures of what would, what would be wellness. Maybe your blood markers uh, are better. Maybe your skin looks better. Maybe when you wake up in the morning, you feel rested and refreshed instead of fatigued and tired. And so we look at what personally you need to be doing, which you can be measuring to make sure that you're seeing success as you go forward. And then the final bit is the self-awareness, which is really the bigger, harder part of this, uh, because many of us have these, these limitations and these the capacities to do some things and then not do things. So kind of understanding, am I an all or none type of person? You know, what, what are the vacations and things that I'm going to want to take in the next year? So if I tell myself I want to lose some weight or I want to get fit, are there going to be events that are going to get in my way and maybe derail me? And what can I do to be ready for those? So you go through the GPS, the grounding, the personalization, and the self-awareness. And from there, you have a mindset where you can approach this from a very grounded, well-positioned 
and, and you know where you're going and why you're, and how you're going to get there. So all those bits and pieces, if those are in place first, then you're going to use the right strategies and tactics to get the job done. So a lot of people just rush in, you know, New Year's Eve, they're like, okay, so I'm going to go on a diet. I'm going to eat this, uh, this vegan diet. I'm going to do the workouts. I'm going to sign up with the gym. I'm going to be there every day. I'm going to do this cardio. And three weeks in, they're miserable uh, because they didn't realize that that was going to be so hard and they tried to do too much at one time for who they are. So again, going through the grounding, the personalization and the self-awareness gives you the tools to stick with it for the long term. You know, Scott, you produce a bulletin which gives people a lot of advice on how to take care of their bodies. Now, the last one that I saw was a very interesting one. Can you address that and give our audience a sense or a taste of what was in that bulletin? Um, I certainly, uh, I certainly can. I'm just, you know, I, I put out a bunch of them, I, and uh, you know, my marketing team puts uh, uh, puts them out. So I just have to see which one was uh, the last one that was was written and uh, and and put out. Um, you know, yeah, basically, you know, the, the one that we recently put out was was on exercising when you have an injury, um, and that, you know. W- you have to be really, really careful and you have to, you know, make sure that you, you know how your body is responding to, um, to different movements and different exercises. And that is, it's very important when you have an injury, because if you are trying to do something uh, that is potentially um, making your injury worse, you could potentially do uh, major damage to your tendons and joints um, moving into, you know, uh, the years down the line. And that can potentially, uh, you know, cause quite a bit of damage um, in in your joints and muscles. So, you know, exercising while you have an injury, there's um, there's certainly lots that can be done when you do have an injury. um, And you just have to, you know, know the right movements and the right movement patterns. And you have to work with someone that actually knows about injuries and about what should and shouldn't be done and contraindications to certain injuries and, and movements that should be done that are good for you when you have a specific injury, whether it's um, uh, something like an acute muscle strain or you, you're dealing with um, um, you know, uh, arthritis um, and, and some degenerative issues that I'm sure Alan works with uh, quite a few of his, his clients with. And you know, if you know how to work with clients or, or how to treat patients with these degenerative conditions, you know, you can, you can be very productive and, and do quite a bit of um, um, exercise and, and um, you know, work even with these degenerative issues and, and specific injuries while you're trying to, uh, uh, to get this, to get better and, and to improve your pain. Alan, I'm interested in knowing, do you work with anybody from the military? You know, we have a military who's come back from Afghanistan. And what's happened is they've had a lot of injuries. I mean, a lot. But you don't want them to be sedentary. You don't want them to just do nothing. So how do you treat somebody like that? Well, that is very interesting because it was funny. I was I was in the military way back when, and I can remember you know carrying 65, 75 pound packs and how damaging that was to even my young body. And yes, now we're seeing that there's a lot of overuse, uh, a lot of those sort of, and and I'm hearing you know they're carrying packs as much as 100 or more pounds. Um, so again, I think those are really really some bad situations that they found themselves in. But it, it was just a part of the job. Now they're back, and when someone comes back and they're injured. The first thing is, okay, make sure you're cleared. Talk to a doctor, talk to someone like Scott, get your physical therapy done, get yourself to a point where you're resilient enough and strong enough to actually start doing some things. And then again, it's just the awareness, uh, as Scott said, if, if there's something that's hurting you and something that's damaged, we can work around that. There are other fitness modalities that could be very, very important for you in the long run. Uh, that you may not be working on steadily now. So maybe they do have a knee problem and they need to work on that and get that resolved. And they're getting physical therapy for that. Uh, We can still work on upper body strength. Uh, We can still work on some stamina things. Uh, We can start working on mobility and and they can do things like yoga or Tai Chi or some other things that are really going to give them a peace of mind that they're doing something positive for their health and fitness uh, without trying to work through that knee pain because you you, should, you know, the whole adage of no pain, no gain was probably about the dumbest thing we could have ever done to ourselves uh, in the gym. And so working through pain is not the answer. Uh, getting yourself healed 
and working around that and doing some other things that are beneficial for your health and fitness are what you should be doing. You know, Scott, I'm wondering now, I'm, I'm talking about this time. Um, what are the kind of people that you're seeing? Is it really an older group or are you seeing everybody, even young people, as we talked about before? Because there is a difference in the way they need to be handled. You know, you talk to a person who's in their 80s and they want to move around. They want to get around. They don't want to be sedentary. So the question becomes, how do you treat them um, in, in a way that they won't suffer and that they'll be able to be, you know, do versatile things? Well, it's very important to, you know, obviously know, know your, your clientele and who you're working with and, and uh, the, the, the way that you progress with, uh, with a teenager or a 20-something-year-old is going to be certainly different than, than someone who you're going to progress with at, uh, that is 80 or 90 years old. In our population here um, in Delray Beach, Florida, it's a, it's a very active population. Um, even our, you know, 80, 80 year old plus patients are, you know, playing golf, they're playing tennis, they're playing pickleball. And for the patients that, that are not, that are more sedentary, more inactive, you know, we have to develop a treatment program that is catered to, to them. And, you know, my, my theory and my motto really is always, you know, try not to do too much more than what you have been doing, you know, uh, prior to um, uh, prior to that 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 day, you know. So if you're, you know, if if you really were only walking, uh, you know, two blocks, I'm not going to tell a patient to go walk a mile for uh, for exercise. You know, you may start walking three blocks, and if you slowly increase your activity level based on what you can tolerate without increased pain your body's going to adjust to that new level and get stronger and, and be able to tolerate a little bit more. If you all of a sudden just start adding 15, 20 different exercises that these patients have never done before, you're going to cripple them and they're not going to come back and, and you're going to probably cause more pain than, than good. And the difference no. with maybe a younger patient, an older patient, is that you can probably you could probably give a twenty year old uh, several new exercises and progress them a lot quicker, and they're going to bodies are going to naturally respond to these um, uh, exercises um, uh, a lot quicker. You know, Alan, one of the things you talked about dieting in a way, um, and I'm interested in knowing whether you how you feel about vitamins and minerals and the, and the pills that people are taking i mean there's a commercial on air right now which is over and over that you know it's a pill that has vegetables in it and then there's another pill that has fruits in it so when you see these commercials and when you know that people are taking a lot of vitamins what's your advice to them well, it is possible in today's age for us to be overfed, overweight, and malnourished. So uh, you can't just poo-poo supplements all the way across the board. There are specific times when people do need supplements. If they're eating a certain way, uh, such as a vegan, uh, they may not be getting enough B12. So if they have a deficiency of B12, which a doctor can test for, uh, then B12 supplementation is good. Uh, we also know that vitamin D is often very difficult for us to get enough of uh, if we're not getting regular sunshine exposure uh, or it's the winter time or something like that up north, they're, they're not getting enough exposure. So a vitamin D supplement might be appropriate. Uh, if you're not eating enough fish, because maybe you just don't like fish, uh, maybe you're not getting enough omega-3 and a supplement could be valuable to you. So uh, there are circumstances when supplements are very important and, and useful. Uh, however, uh, for most of us, a lot of those supplements we're taking, uh, if you're taking a supplement that's fruits, why not just have some fruit? Uh, <laughs> if you want to take supplements that are vegetables, why not just find vegetables that you enjoy eating and get a good variety of them in your diet? Uh, because you're getting the fiber and you're getting all the nutrients and you're getting it naturally. Uh, it's a much better mix for your body. And in the hundreds and hundreds of people that I've interviewed, and we talk about their way of eating and we talk about weight loss, it always comes down to one thing good quality whole food. Something that was alive is giving you life. Something that was alive is giving your body the building materials to build you. And when you treat your body that way, you put in signals. So food is information. When you're putting information in your body that you have enough food, you have what you need. 
you're getting the nutrition your body wants. And so it's not malnourished, even though you're overfed. And now your body feels full sooner because the signaling of the leptin and ghrelin is doing its thing of when you're hungry and when you're not. And then you start to naturally lose weight as a sort of a side effect of eating well, of moving well, of doing the things, the lifestyle things that make us healthy. Health should be your first overall objective. And then the other good things just happen as a result of that. You know, I'll tell you something, Alan. One of the things that I remember uh, when kids went to school and they had their lunches in the lunchroom in the school, what they would be getting is really horrible food. And today the shelves are empty. I mean, you you talk about getting vegetables and you talk about getting um, different kinds of food that really are helpful to your body. But, you know, we're living in such a strange time that the shelves are empty. And how do you really account for that? I'm asking you a political question. And the fact of the matter is that I'm wondering what you can do to supplement the fact that you can't get what you need. Well, you, you know, you brought up a very interesting fact because there, there, there are food deserts out there. There are times when people can't get the nutrition uh, that they need. And um, one of the great things about the human body and our, and our capacity is that our body adapts very, very well. Um, you know, in the past, we didn't have grocery stores. Our ancestors had to go uh, hunt for food, gather food. They had to do work to, to get fed. And this was a normal everyday thing. And there would be periods of time when food was scarce. So to, to have a, a, a really bad uh, situation where you're completely undernourished uh, with regards to nutrients that you need, like I said, vitamins, minerals, and, the, and that type of thing, um, that's been a normal occurrence over, over our whole history until just recently with the food abundance that we have. But even then, a lot of the food abundance we have, the nutrition is not the same. They've over farm the land and the, the minerals and the vitamins aren't necessarily there. So when you're in a situation where you can't get good quality food, uh, you, you have to do what you have to do to feed your family. That might be a good case for supplementation. Um, but again, that's the kind of the same concept of go for high quality, you know, so don't, don't think that going to the, the, the mega market, I'm not going to use their name to buy your groceries. I mean, you go there to buy your groceries and you're going to buy your, their vitamins. Well, their vitamins might not be the best thing for you. They might not have what they say on the label. Um, there's plenty of cases that they found where that's the case. So go with a good brand, go with something you can trust, get the highest quality you can afford. Uh, and yes, if that's a period of time when, because there's not an abundance of food, then there's a problem. There's a food desert or food shortage. Uh, then you just do what you can with what you have, where you are. Yeah. And Scott, you treat, um, and I've talked about this a million times, you treat so many different kinds of people, people from all different ethnicities and people from different ages. Now, you are experiencing a lot of differences today than it was yesterday. Um, when you started your business, the physical therapy, Miller Physical Therapy, was there a different way that you treat people today as opposed to when you started? Um, not really. You know, it's, um, you know, I've been doing this. I've had my practice for 15 years and, you know, I, I certainly, you know, continue to take uh, continuing education classes and new techniques and new uh, procedures are, are um, you know, constantly being researched and, and uh, implemented in the field of physical therapy. But when it, um, you know, when you get down to the core of, you know, a patient's uh, a treatment session, you know, we are there to, you know, one, improve pain, two, improve function. We want to improve their mobility. We want to improve their strength. And it all comes down to, you know, sometimes there's different little different techniques to achieve each of those. Um, but for the most part, we're, you know, we're the, the core um, goals are, are still the same. We're trying to improve their function and, and, and meet their, the goals of, of, you know, what, what they're looking to do. You know, Scott, the other thing I want to know is when you started, um, did you think that you would have such a successful practice? Of course I did. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, glad to hear that. <laughs> no, you know, absolutely. I was, um, I was young. I was very naive when I opened up the practice, not really, you know, 
thinking too too far and you know i was hoping to you know to have a nice um you know a, a nice quaint practice in, in delray beach and you know i've really um you know i've really built up a nice uh, a nice niche right here in in downtown delray and it's uh it's you know i'm, I'm very happy of the you know the, the clients that i've that i've I've gotten over over the years, and and the name that we built for ourselves here, and and it's not you know it's not just me, but I, I have a wonderful team of uh, of therapists and and managers and and um and, and aides and techs that really help this office run smoothly and and uh you know achieve what we're you know our goals. Yeah, and this is um, directed to you, Alan. You know, you left a sweet corporate job and moved to the Caribbean island. This is really interesting with your wife to run a gym and a bed and breakfast. What made you decide to do that? I would love to do that. That sounds really terrific. What made you do it? Well, you know, in looking at the kind of the foundations of, of wellness, of, of being healthy, fit, and happy, uh, what I found was, you know, initially... Uh, I was not doing very well on any of those. And that includes nutrition, movement, uh, sleep, and stress management. So over the course of the period of time, uh, I figured out my nutrition. I figured out my fitness and the movement. I figured out how to sleep better. Uh, but that job <laughs> uh, was a major stressor. And at a point that I was going through layoffs, we had three years of, of significant layoffs. And then my name was finally on the list in uh, December of seventeen. That was a po point where I told my wife, I said, the stress and what it's doing to me and to us is not worth uh, the juice. It's not worth the job. It's not worth the money. So I just told her, I said, let's try to figure out something different. And as we were going through that process, uh, the idea came to us that if we moved to a Caribbean island with a lower cost structure, we would have freedom and we could do the things we wanted to do. And it just happened, uh, you know, kind of one of those crazy uh cool things. Uh, when we came down to Bocas del Toro, Panama, to, to look for a place to move, uh, they happened to have a gym for sale. Um, so I started the negotiation process for the gym. Uh, we moved down here in February of 2019. Uh, I was able to buy the gym in June. Uh, of course, we were closed down the following March for 11 months, but um, we did reopen in February and the gym's doing well. In the interim, we also ran across this bed and breakfast, Lula's, and so we went ahead and bought it and we've renovated it and reopened it as of um, November. And so, yeah, we, we operate a uh, six bedroom bed and breakfast here in beautiful Bocas del Toro. Uh, I own the gym, but, you know, it's staffed most of the time. So I, I do a little bit of work there, but not a lot. But, so it's just a, it's a totally different lifestyle, but the whole principle behind it was, uh, you know, there's stress management and there's stress uh, mitigation for most people. And then there's also just the removal of stress. So getting rid of toxic relationships, getting out of toxic, uh, stressful jobs. If you can figure out a way to do it it's, it, it's exactly what you thought it was going to be. Everybody says they want to move to a Caribbean island. Tammy and I were just, um, we were just stubborn enough to do it. You know, Scott, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm jealous. I don't know how you feel. I mean, listen to him. You're in Delray Beach, Florida, which is a little bit of a paradise, but he's in the Caribbean. What did you like to open up an office in the Caribbean and have one in Delray Beach? What a perfect fit that would be. I'm, I'm looking at real estate right now in Panama. Um, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, I swear, you know, that's, um, you know, we do live in paradise, but when you get, uh, when you get caught up in, you know, in the, in the, in the craziness of, of owning a business and, um, you know, and, and life with, uh, you know, with, with kids and everything, it, um, you, you sometimes forget about, uh, forget about things like that. And, you know, uh, my wife and I always, uh, you know, always dreamed of opening up a little bed and breakfast and it does sound like a dream there, Alan. And it, uh, that does sound, sound awesome. Um, and, um, you know, maybe, maybe one day, I could, uh, you know, I, I could do the same. Scott, one more thing. Uh, it's a Caribbean island that doesn't get hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> even, even better. That's right. Well, the fact of the matter is that we haven't had a hurricane in a long time. So we're pretty lucky here. What I want to know from the two of you, 
I always say to my guests, and Scott knows this, I'd like you to have the last word because there is something that you didn't talk about that I think people need to know. And then after that, I want you to tell them how they get in touch with you because that is really, you know, special. And I think that they ought to see Scott and they ought to go to you, Alan. So number one, what is your last word? Well, for me, you know, a lot of people look at fitness and they, they think it's like the CrossFit athletes out there or the other athletes they see. And I'm going to tell you, that's not what real fitness is. Uh, real fitness is fit for tasks. So if you want to be the best grandmother you can be, uh, you're going to need to be fit for that. You're going to need the stamina and the strength to be that grandmother. Uh, if you want to continue to play tennis or pickleball, you're going to need the stamina and the strength and the balance and the agility to play that well for as long as you possibly can. I often joke with clients that I want to be able to wipe my own butt when I'm 105. And the principle of that is I want to be independent and strong and capable and be able to do all the things I do and enjoy myself down here in Bocas del Toro. So um, I would just say, make fitness what you want it to be and work towards being the best you you can uh, and everything else will fall in place. Uh, you can reach me at 40plusfitness.com or 40plusfitnesspodcast.com where I publish the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. Uh, it's one of the largest, it's the oldest uh, podcast in the health and fitness space for people over 40. Uh, I have great guests on and you'll learn a lot there. Uh, and then finally, if you are thinking about taking a vacation and you're looking for a wonderful little place that's completely off the map for most people, uh, come down to Bocas del Toro and stay with us at Lula's at Lula tv.com scott you you've done this a million times you've given us the last word but i would like to hear what you say now because we haven't talked in a little while so there must be something that you want to tell our audience um well i completely agree with that with alan as far as um you know the, the level of fitness and you know level of fitness is um you know is going to be different at, at every spectrum of of your life and you should um uh, don't take your body for granted. Um, you really need to, uh, you need to know your body and, and to touch upon something that, that, uh, that we said earlier, um, about, um, knowing your body and how the, you know, the, the misconception of, of no pain, no gain, um, is such an old, an old school term that I hear all the time with patients where, you know, we're trying to take them through a movement and, uh, you know, we are trying to communicate with them as far as what, you know, how it feels. Are you feeling a stretch? Are you feeling the muscle working? Uh, are you, you know, what are you feeling? They're like, oh, it, it, it's killing me, but, but, you know, no pain, no gain. I got to do it. And, and, you know, that's, that's not the case. Um, and that's one with, you know, certain exercises that, that, you know, you, you're doing on your own, but it's the same for just functional type movements. You know, if you're, you know, um, squatting down to pick something up from the floor and you're, you know, your knees are really, really hurting or your back hurts, you know, don't just say, you know, well, I'm getting old. It's, 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 it's going, it's going to hurt. There are ways to fix that. There are ways to, around that. There are, are, are movement patterns that can be changed to, uh, um, uh, to, to improve the, the pain. You don't have to live, you don't have to live in pain and, you know, both physical therapy and, um, you know, fitness specialists can certainly, uh, can certainly help get you to that next level, uh, to live, you know, to live the active life that you should. Um, and you know, if you're ever in, in sunny Florida, Delray beach and need physical therapy, I, I have a great practice here in Delray beach. Um, my website has, a plethora of information on basically every injury. It has a, a lot of uh, good anatomy stuff and a, a lot of uh, details about um, any type of condition. And that's miller-pt.com or just Google Miller Physical Therapy in Delray Beach. And uh, you'll see uh, you know, all the content that's available on our website. And uh, you can certainly reach me as well right through the Contact Us page on our website. Well, the two of you have been terrific guests. I always love having you on the show, Scott, you know that. And Alan, you're new to me, but you know what? What you told people is really going to have an impact. So I want to thank Scott Miller and Alan Misner for being on the Susan Brenda show. It's really been a pleasure. And thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Always a pleasure being on your show. 